هوا 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 Oh, we just got to get cozy. So, uh, where shall we dive? How deep shall we go? When uncovering the Moor, the Moabite, the Muhammad, the Baphomet. Of Belus. Part three. Hold on, let me fix my fire, man. Sometimes my fire needs a little a little fixing. So brother gotta I gotta get my thing. Right, where's my pole at? There we go. Alright, I can get my pole situated. Yeah, I mean that's a little better, right? That's a little better for you. So we good, we cozy. We good, we cozy. I done told y'all, man, that we've been surfing the wave for a minute in Twitterville. So if you're on that Twitter wave, love to you and uh, for everyone. You know what I mean? Dropping a drop on Twitter, man. And in specifics, specifically speaking, let's give some love to our brother Christopher Bryant. Man, he dropped a few links on us, man, so we can. Keep going with this particular, uh, you know, investigation here, man. We get into this map of Amexum. You know I'm saying we get into the genealogy of Ruth. And now the brother said, follow Ruth to Jesse. Follow Ruth to Jesse to King David. And I say, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to get all in it, man. We got, he got another link for us. Um, he said Hebrew, Ivri equals to cross over. Remember Atlantis sunk. This is very important. This is very important. Atlantis sunk. America is the new world. Now that's, you know, based on the perspective of a land sinking. Now, I don't think that all of what is considered Atlantis sunk. I think that. You know, when you talk about South America, especially, these are all parts of Atlantis because Atlantis is a plural. It is multiple islands, not just one area. So I don't think that the creator destroyed all that is order, but only the chaos, the man-made island, specifically, you know, the large interconnecting island. When we get into this map here, man, that plays so heavy. All right, so you got America over here. It's just, it's just a long projection that gives you America on both sides. So you got America here and America here. Now, whichever one you want to look at, let's start over here. You know, you got this Lemuria connected on this side. Now, this is the Mu Lemuria connection. It's also connected over here to Australia, to this what's called Kandami, Kandem, Kandam, whatever they call it. All Lemuria, though, whatever they call that, all right? Pan, Lemuria, Mu, all hijack frequencies on the indigenous drop. So you're getting these maps from basically the hijack's perspective. Atlantis is a hijack. It's the son of Poseidon. It's Atlas, Atlas, plural, Atlantis. The first 10 dynastic rulers of Atlantis go hand in hand with the dynastic rulers of Egypt. All is connected. Atlantis here. Look over here. America, New York City here. Connected to Atlantis. Connects to, you know, all of Asia. All of Africa. Now, why is this important? Hebrew, Hebrew, to cross over. Remember, Atlantis sunk. America is the new world. Right? Now, to them, it's new. To us, is it new? Not all of us were coming out of Atlantis in one part. Some of us were in areas that were already, you know what I'm saying, considered Atlantis. Just because they just put it here on the map doesn't mean that this all is not Atlantis. You know what I'm saying? The multiple islands, especially when you talk westward. 
which is really eastward, but we'll get into it, man. So let's go, man. Chris Dunk, Chris, Christopher Bryant uh, gave us some great drop, man. Love to the brother Chris Duncan, who's always dropping that drop, man. And everybody, man, Drop Nation. When when people get at us, they always say, man, we've been surfing the wave. Drop Nation, man, it's just a, a beautiful vibe, man. And that's all you, you know what I'm saying? You are Drop Nation, everyone. Uh, someone said, man, how do I join y'all camp, man? I'm trying to join the camp. And I'm like, you are already Drop Nation. You already got the drop. This is not a camp. This is not a, a sign up. Drop Nation is you. You got the drop. No one can package that. I can't package that. I can't package you. I'm just I'm just remembering with you as your brother. So let's go. Follow Ruth to Jesse to King David, the brother said. Follow Ruth to Jesse to King David, the brother said. America is the new world, so people, he brewed Atlantis. He brewed to cross over, so people crossed over Atlantis to New Northwest Amexum. Now, where is Northwest Amexum? We've seen this on their contracts. And it always said Africa, so we said, oh, that must be Africa. That must be what they're calling Africa. But what are they really calling Africa? So their brother put dropped his, you know, a couple of links. We got to pull this map up. That's the first thing he dropped, so let's pull that one up, man. What do we got here? All right, map of a maximum copyright. So someone copyrighted this map. Why did they copyright this map? What's going on? What's going on? Let me blow this up. See what they shocking about. All right. So they calling Mecca the Garden of Eden. Okay. Well, well, let's see what's going on. We got Moab and Amman here. We know we got a Moab. You know where we at? So we know they still going with this situation. But let's see the drop. Let me see if you can find the drop. <laughs> Drop Nation, come out to play. Dominion of Ham, Dominion of Kush. I mean, that's it. There's no Shem. It's just Kush and Ham. Ham and Kush, Kush and Ham. They run the board. Look at the board, people. They run the whole board. What does Morocco want? What do the Moabites want? Why are they making treaties with colonizers? Would you make a treaty for your house, for your bedroom? While an invader lives in your house and says, yeah, take the bedroom. I'm taking the whole house. Okay, cool. I'll take the bedroom. Would you do that? Yes, you would if it wasn't your house and you always wanted to live there and you were greedy and you wanted a one world order. What does Morocco want? They want everything. Oh, the Morocco Empire. Under the Pharaoh's permission, the Pharaoh's permission. Oh, the Moroccan Empire, Atlantis. Under the Pharaoh's permission, Atlantis. Oh, no, we're not even in Africa. This is what you consider Africa. What do the Moors with their high science of Moab, Thoth born, that Moses. If they're rocking Thoth and Thoth is Tut Moses, then they have to get permission from Tut Moses energy. So whatever they go, wherever they rock must be under the Pharaoh's permission, it says. Under Thoth's permission. Under the Pharaoh's permission. Now they call North America, right? So this is North America. 
South America. Remember our map how Atlantis is connecting North America, South America, and Africa. <laughs> y'all didn't think y'all thought this was play play. I mean, you really thought that this was play play when we did this months and months ago. And I said, man, I don't know. And, and some of y'all got it right away. We talked about how certain people were trapped in this Mediterranean Sea, couldn't get out the pillars of Hercules. These guys had them on lock until some energy rose up over them. And then that energy crossed in here and everything was sunk. But before that, these Atlanteans have stories. Thoth has stories of hijacking you here. The Thoth Amon spell barrier is here. And again, I said, you don't think there's a Thoth Amon spell barrier? Well, according to a team in Arizona that do reality simulations, there's actually a Thoth Amon spell barrier. And as you see this whole Pangea situation, see, I'm just bringing out Pangea situations. We're just talking cartography and map projections. We're just talking science, repeatable and observable science. Now look how big South America is. Here's what you consider Africa. They don't even consider this Africa. They consider everything Africa. But Africa, that term don't even predate Ethiopia, which doesn't even predate Abyssinia. So it's a hijack term over a hijack term over a hijack term. And everything they told you was here, Egypt and this and that and that, is all over here. And here they're calling it Stagia, Egypt, Stagia, Kim, Luxor, Kush. Timbuktu, Darfur, Punt. What does it say? Kishan. Kishan. All right. You got the Amazon, Amazonia, Black Coast, Black Kingdoms. Now, there's a huge chakra around here that we'll get into when we dig on this Peru, Peru, Jeru, Jerusalem. The Zimbabwe connected to Punt, and underneath you have the Thoth Amon spell barrier. Thoth Amon spell barrier. So you have a Thoth spell barrier over the land of no return in South America connected to the Amazon, which is connected to Punt, Zimbabwe, Timbuktu, Timbuktu, Mali. So if you want to talk Mali, Mali, South America, it's already here. Kush, Stagia, Egypt, Kim, Luxor, underneath that or over that. Shem, S-H-E-N, the land of Shem. Oh, where's their Shem? Oh, we can get on Pickland and Samaria. All the drop is over here. All the drop is here. Let's go here. You have Vindian, Vindian. The Vindian Desert, Central Vindia, ancient lands. Let's go to where your Egypt would be. You have the Utara Kuru, Mountains of Mist, Utara Kuru City, Coastal Utara, Utara. All right. And they call the Himalayans over here, Western Himalayans. Shambhala, Shambhala, Shambhala. So is that where they would put Israel? Shambhala, interesting, interesting. But where, where's, where's Egypt? Where's Kim? Where's Punt? Where's Zimbabwe? Oh yeah, there's Punt. There's Zimbabwe. Oh, there's Egypt. There's Luxor. There's Kim. Where's Kush? There's Kush. Where's the Thoth Amon spell barrier? Thoth Amon spell barrier. And this is just a reality simulation in Arizona. Customer service number, man. They got a whole, this is connected to a reality, you know, game, whole situation. You know how they like to put the truth in all this gamer stuff, you know what I'm saying? So this is just something that we've been rocking with that so far has not let us down. That has connected with this 1,000. 
We just talking about Atlantis connecting this so-called Africa to America. But what do they call it? North America, South America. This is your so-called Africa. Here's Atlantis, the same. They're calling it all Moroccan Empire. Everything's Morocco. We're doing it all for Moab. Our profits, our land, our treaties, our constitution, our law. Why are they so infatuated with law? Because they need something to circumvent the creator's law. While they do their bay and owls and their bay owls and their thoughts. And they say, brother, we're all the same. Look at we have this huge kingdom. We have it all. And you're like, wait a minute. I have it all. I have it all. You don't fool me. You're claiming Moab. When has a Moabite led Israel? You have your prophets, we have ours. Well, let's get into what the brothers say. What the brothers say, Christopher Bryant. He said, man, follow Ruth to Jesse to King David. Before that, he said, so the people he brewed Atlantis to Northwest of Mexico. And then we said, well, where's Northwest of Mexico? And over here it says Northwest of Maxim Africa. So they considered North America, North West of Maxim Africa. The land of Shem, Shem, Shem. Shem, S-H-E-M, Shem. At least on this map over Egypt here. Shem. Pick land divided into 12 tribes. You have the lion. You have the panther, the wolf, the bear. <laughs> and I said before, is it play play? We got into the Picts and the Pictish wilderness and the Andros and see these moors and these moors. Remember. Remember a very important part when you get into this terminology. When you get into the house of Andros, Clan Ross, Rus, Russia, Moscow, Mazaka, Mexica, Mexico, all the connection. We give love to our queens. Lady Andros. Yeah, we got black British royalty, right? So we got these highlands, these Scottish highlands, these picks. But let's go all the way down to where we discuss these moors. More, I want more. We got into the Andros Crest. Has been spelled Andrew, Andrew, Mac Andrew, Andro, 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 and many more. Clan Ross. It was originally Clan Seal Andrea, meaning the race of Andrew. The race of Andrew. Interesting. Interesting. Chief of the clan rendered homage. To King Edward I of England, 1296. So what takeover was this? Now, let's get into the Andros. Let's get into the Moor. Man, 
I'm gonna leave this link again, man, because as you see, it's hard to it's hard to get past all this drop. Man, I saw something else about the picks. Hold up, hold up. This is Christy. It says the picks were an ancient Scottish tribe where the ancestors of the Christy family lived. The name Christy comes from Christopher or perhaps Christian. When the first dictionaries were invented in the, in the last few hundred years, spelling gradually became standardized. Before that time, scribes spelled according to sound. Names were often recorded under different variations and that's what we're talking about these different variations so i want to get this uh let's see where we at okay 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 so we see something like this again the andros crest and you see the more m-o-r-e and you're like well what's the m-o-r-e m-o-o-r the more M-O-R-E surname in Scotland is thought to have been a topographic or, you know, depending on where you're living, type of name situation for someone who resided near a more M-O-O-R. Ah, so when you hear these brothers talking real quick and slick, these moors and this civil war with these type of moors and these moors, you know what I mean? They're claiming a side of a moor. There's certain moors. So when they come with their maps and saying, oh, everything's Morocco, everything's our type of moor, then there's another moor, there's another priest king, another house of Andros who are also being considered moor. And what does this moor mean? What's the meaning? We're getting into meaning. We're getting into exposure. We're putting light so we get meaning. The Moor surname in Scotland is thought to have been a topographic name for someone who resided near a Moor, M-O-O-R. So you have the M-O-R-E and M-O-O-R or Heath. In Gaelic, Moor, M-O-R means great or big. So they're using it in terms of great or big. Therefore, a scribe may have been mistaken the adjective Moor as a surname Moor or Muir, M-U-I-R. This may explain the occurrence of the surname Muir, M-I-M-U-I-R, or a variant in Northern Scotland. Now, this is what you're seeing. This is M-O-I-R, M-O-R-E. So again, Moor means greater big. A scribe may have mistaken the adjective more as a surname more. Adjectives, surnames, adjective, great, big, something is great. These people come from a great lineage. Like when you research Aryan, you have basically just talking about a noble, a, a great, a great blood, a great blood. It doesn't mean no white, blue eyed blood. Aryan it just means you have a great blood, a great seed, a great blood more. All right, all ways of throwing throwing you around. So remember, M O R E, topographic. A scribe may have mistaken the name Moore M O R as a surname Moore M O R E or M U I R. So using adjectives as surnames, surnames as adjectives, we were all more, 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 whatever you want to call it. We're all great or big in our kingdom. Now, which kingdom are you rocking from there? Are you rocking the kingdom of Moabite Moor? Are you living near a Moor and being put on this adjective of a Moor? And again, what do the Moors want? They want more. Oh, they want more from Moab. They want Northwest Amexum. Africa, which is just North America. They want Southwest Amexum, Africa, which is South America. 
They want it all of Atlantis, which is where they're getting their Thoth energy from. Spreading that into this Africa here, which is just northeast of Mexico, Africa. That's how they divided the board. This is northeast of Mexico. You call it Africa, they call it North, Northeast Africa. This is Northwest Africa, Southwest Africa. Northwest and Southwest Africa are their dominions of Ham. So when you got writers saying, oh, a bunch of Hamites live here, well, they're talking about these Moors. Dominion of Ham. Which is connected under the Pharaoh's permission. Dominions of Cush. Now we got all these people working as a confederacy. These children of Lot. Ammon. And the Amalekite. The Ammonite. The Moabite. All this is a maxim. So remember the treaties. And you see how this Atlantis. And this is all coming out of this Doth Atlantis. Alright, so I just want to get that. The same Thoth Atlantis that we've been getting coming from this Thoth Atlantis. Talking about the same treaties, I mean, the same treaties. Zillia SL, Moabite. What are we talking here? Transfer of inheritance to the Moors of North America, North America. That's their what? Northwest of Maxim, Africa. Under their dominion, the Moroccan Empire. So yeah, they did a deal with the devil. This thought a long time ago. They kept doing a deal with more devils, more treaties. Until they were just treated out. And then someone came and hijacked their entire constitution and their laws, which is why they got the drop on this particular corporate constitution, because they invented the shit to colonize you first. Even back in Atlantis. So what are these indigenous tribes when you're reading these cliches saying that they're coming out, they're being led out? Being led out by Moshe, Mozaka, Mashika, Mexico, let go. Man, love again to the brother, Christopher Bryant. Now he said, follow Ruth to Jesse to King David. Let's do this quickly. Ruth, the Moabitess. Oh. Are you saying, and check this out, Ruth. Now let's go this way first. Up or down, up or down. All right, all right, she's the mother of Malon and, I mean, excuse me, the wife of Malon and Boaz. Mother of Obed. You click Obed. Click on the links. You got them all. Let go. Bad. So Ruth is the mother of Obed, who's the father of Jesse. See where we're going? Son of Boaz, Ruth, father of Jesse. Jesse is who? Let go. Give me time to sip on my cup. That pure H2O. And say love to the family, love to the tribe, everywhere you already know. So Obed is the father of Jesse, and Jesse is the father of King David. Now, where do our timelines play? If you ain't been surfing the wave, then go back and understand and get the timeline dropped. Press the John Priest King. What are they hiding in the timelines? Where these, uh, you know, 
chronographers coming out of Russia, Anatoly Fedomenko saying everything you're thinking is happening before the 900s is really happening in medieval times. And that's when it's really going down. But they're taking the medieval history and projecting it back in the past. I ask you again, who's Prince John? Now, they're calling him Lenin or Dango Dewey. All right. Look out for Prince John 25 is all I got to say. But this King David plays. Father of King David. They're saying Obed. Son of Obed. Son of Jesse. Son of Obed. All right. All the way back to Boaz. Boaz. Let's go back. So we have Ruth the Moabite. This is about to get real fun. I'm about to connect this real quick because we're going to go back into Prince Ariel Bay. Uh, go back into the OSB. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, so Obed is the son of Ruth the Moabite and Boaz. Let go. This is just the intro. <laughs> Every time, man, we get it like it's the first time. But this is dope. This is dope, man. This is real some. This is some dope connectivity. Come on, man. We just got to slow down because we get too excited. I, mean, I don't know about you, but a lot's going on, you know. In my life, I know a lot's going on in yours. So I know we get excited about stuff like this, man, because, you know, we know it's coming together. So now who is this Ruth of Moab? Now you're telling me that King David, Prester John's great-grandmother is a Moabite. Now, whether this is the King David, if you believe in the timelines, if you believe in they shook you up that much, or you believe your timeline they gave you, your oppressor gave you, and you think this King David was way back, way back in the B.C.s, before a hijack that didn't exist, before Christ, after Christ, what if he didn't exist? Consider it, your timeline will be gone, and they will take the history from the medieval times and create everything else. And yes, you're in a vortex, you're literally in a matrix, but let's go. So, press the John. Keep blowing. Keep flowing. Fair use on your caboose. Get cozy. My man, Christopher Bryant. Let go. Ruth, the Moabite. Now, she is the, the, the daughter of Eglon. Eglon. Who's Eglon? King of Moab. So, she's the daughter of a Moabite king. And she ends up marrying into what you'll find Judah. Now her father is Eglon, king of Moab, who's the son of Balak. Who's the son of Balak? All right. So remember this Balak. Let's go back to Ruth. <laughs> We're going to go fast. Let's go. Now, Ruth marries Milan and Boaz. Click Boaz. Let's get familiar. So, Boaz is the seed, right? His seed is Obed, Obed whose seed is Jesse, whose seed is King David. It is following the genealogy, man. Now, he's the brother of El Melech, Melech. And the second son of Solomon of Judah. So you're getting the Judah right away out of Boaz. And if you click on, let's say, Solomon. He's the son of Nashan ben Amadav. Who is this? Who is this Bashad? Nashan? Oh man, who's Nashan? 
Elishan is the prince of the tribe of Judah, chief Cohen, prince de Jude. He's the prince of Judah, which means his father is the king of Judah. His father is Amenab, Amenab, Amen. Uh, nah, a minute now. Nah. So we're getting right into that second Samuel, that 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 first king, second kings. We're going right into that tonight. Prince of the tribe of Judah, Chief Cohen. Whenever you see the Cohen, replace that C with a K, cause they did it. Khan, it's Khan. Cohen is Khan. Khan is Wang. Khan is Prester John. Khan. Get that series. We'll be back. At part 25. Con, con. Love to, love to uh, Christopher Bright. <laughs> all right, so we got the tribe of Judah. All right, all right. So that's 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 the lineage of that of of Boaz. So Boaz is Judah, coming out of the kings of Judah. Okay, Boaz through Solomon. So this Boaz ends up marrying Ruth the Moabite. Now, why would Ruth the Moabite? I mean, these are just questions we're going to ask. Fuck everybody else and love to everybody. If you know what I mean. Now, why would Ruth the Moabite, daughter of King Eglon and King Baalak, Balak, Baalak. Let's go back to Eglon. So Eglon is her pops. So the great grandmother of King David is a Moabite. Yeah. But the seed is coming still through the kings of Judah, through Saman, all the way up to Nashan. But Ruth the Moabite is the great grandmother of King David, according to this genealogy. I'm just digging it up through my man, Christopher Bryant. All right, so uh, Ruth of Moab, son of Baalak, 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 brother of Mesha. Remember Mesha, because we're going to get this Mesha. Now, this brother sent me this. He doesn't know what links I got up and how we serving. So this, you know, this is all hawa, hawa. Hey, hey, you already know. All right, all right. So, Baalak, Baalak. Let's go, let's go. Let's just get there. Let's go back in the JewishEncyclopedia.com. Let's try to get some babies out, see what's going on. Let's jump right in. At the time of the Hebrew invasion, the Moabites seem to have been so powerful that conflict with them was avoided so i guess they're calling the hebrews and you know saying or either the moabites invading or the people were invading the hebrews a lot of their sentences are kind of like this where you can kind of take it either way whatever their perspective is but we're getting babies man so let's go let's get the moshe so at the time of the hebrew invasion the moabites seem to have been so powerful that conflict with them was avoided so somehow they avoided conflict because of they were so powerful so the hebrews must have been coming back up on them for something invading something but you know or taking back something whatever perspective you have but the moabites were so powerful that they still avoided conflict although the israelites still defeated and slew sahan the amor more more morocco amorite king of Heshbon, who himself had conquered a former king of Moab. All right, so this Amorite king, who himself conquered a former king of Moab, so there was beef between this particular group too. So Moab, on the other hand, under its king Baalak. Ah, so we right here with Baalak. Look how we're surfing the wave. So Baalak is, again, let's go back. We, we could take our time. We ain't got to rush. Calm down. Calm down. Chill out. Take a break, man. 
Take a break from everything and come back to this when you're ready. Because we got the drop over here. Eglon. Balak's the father of Eglon, who is the father of... Ruth the Moabitess. Ruth of Moab, who's the grandmother or great-grandmother of... Priest King, King David, Lepna Dangle, Dewit, Dewit, Raja Haraja, Trola the second. Let's get it. So what about this Balak again? Moab, on the other hand, under its king Balak, meditated a resistance to the invaders, which it dared not carry out. I don't know what that means. You tell me. Numbers uh, 22... All right, Deuteronomy, Judges, so all this is in your Tanakh. You got the link, pull it up, go through it. After the conquest, the Moabite territory was allotted to the tribe of Reuben. Why are the Moabites conquering Hebrews? And if the Moabites are conquering Hebrews, then are the Moabites conquering Hebrews now? I mean, has it changed, people, just because you're asleep? Do you think that, oh, it's all good? Balak. This is Ruth the Moabite's grandfather. Now, why did Ruth, again, I ask, why is Ruth marrying a king of Judah? I mean, why is she marrying into a, a, a high high energy of Judah if she's a daughter of a Moabite king well let's see let's see why let's check out the timeline let's check out the chronology so on the other hand under its king Balak meditated a resistance to which the invaders dared not carry out at the conquest of the Moabite territory was allotted to the tribe of Reuben so Reuben got some of the what they're calling Moabite territory which they are calling Joshua and you know what I'm saying you, you, we're going to see how Joshua plays because you already know clearing out the Canaanites was not favorable to the Moabites because they were rocking the same gods so they're looking at you like the invader you're over here like uh, my, my brothers you, you, you can't have it all you can't say we're invading you because Josh was clearing out Canaanites over here, not over there, over here. All that history is happening right here, people. Oh, you? why are you doing this to the Moabites? Because you want everything. Why would the creator say wipe out all of this Canaanite shit? Because they want everything, these fallen angels, Atlantis, Thoth, they want it all. Baphomet was a deformation of the name Muhammad. Baphomet. Muhammad. Whereby Thoth. Whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under the name of Muhammad. Emerald Tablets, Tablet 1. Fast we fled toward the sun in the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of Kim. So here comes the invasion of Atlantis on the children of Kim. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the children of Kim. Now they're rolling up on the children of Kim. Raging they came with cudgels and spears. The children of Kim tried to annihilate Thoth. But what did Thoth do? They tried to defeat the hijack 101. But what did Thoth do to you, my brothers? My Moabite brothers. 
lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis, then I, Thoth, Hermes, Trigamagistus, then I, Hermes, Trigamagistus, <laughs> Hermes, Trigamagistus, Islamic tradition, Said, Amid, Amarudin, has pointed out that Hermes Trigamagistus has a major place in Islamic tradition. Thoth has a major place in Islamic tradition. Why does Thoth, Hermes Trigamagistus, who's Hermes Trigamagistus? A secretinized, syncretic combination of Greek god Hermes and Egyptian god Thoth. Thoth, Thoth is Hermes Trigamagistus. <laughs> you get used to that. Uh oh. All right. So this has a major place. Hermes Trigamagistus has a major place in Islamic tradition. He writes Hermes Trigamagistus is mentioned in the Quran. Quran in verse 1956 to 57. Mentioned in the book Idris. Mentioned in the book Idris that he was truthful, a prophet. Hermes is a prophet in the Quran. Thoth is a prophet in the Quran, which is why Muhammad is a prophet in the Quran. Whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. So this Thoth and I raised my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. Thoth turned you into stone. Then I spoke to them in words calm and peaceful. When they come in peace, they mean war. He turned you into stone first. Isn't that a declaration of war? Does your friend do that? Then spoke I calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were the children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when I released them. This is Thoth. This is Muhammad. This is Baphomet. These are Moabites. Ruth, Moabite. Baalak, Moab, meditated a resistance. The Moabites seemed to have submitted to the control of the Hebrews for a time until Eglon, king of Moab, who is Eglon, Ruth the Moabite, daughter of Eglon. Man, I love the Christopher Duncan. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Love the Christopher Duncan. Love the Christopher Bryant. And <laughs> love to both of you brothers. Christopher Duncan and Christopher Bryant. Christopher Duncan just sent me some amazing stuff too. I'll, I'll get back to you, my brother. Keep it flowing. Love to you, bro. But yeah, Christopher Bryant, man, put us on this one, you know, this particular uh, stream of water here. So love to the brother. So Eglon is Ruth's pops. And his pops is Balak. So why would Ruth, I mean, she's a prized possession. Why would she marry into Judah? Well, let's follow the chronology. After the conquest, the Moabite territory was allotted to the tribe of Reuben. The Moabites seemed to have been submitted to the control of Hebrews for a time until Eglon, Ruth's pops, king of Moab, with the help of the Ammonites and Amalekites, were getting back into Mount Seir and, and Edom and the swine, succeeded in conquering them. So they got help. Moab got help from their their brethren, their brethren, Ammonites, Amalekites, succeeded in conquering who? The Hebrews, Israelites, and ruled over them 18 years. Now, why would Ruth marry into Judah? Why would Eglon's daughter marry into Judah? Because Eglon came and said, I'm going to do this for Moab. He got the Ammonites, the Amalekites. And he conquered them for only 18 years. So now Ruth grows up, daughter of Eglon, and what happens? 
At the end of this period, a Benjamite named Ehud obtained access to Eglon and treacherously assassinated him. Now, when you go even to Balak, what does it say? Let's go to Eglon's pops. Balak. Baal. Baalic. Baalic, king of Moab, killed by Israelites. So Eglon, killed by Israelites. Moab, killed by Israelites. And you want to ask me, what's the difference, my brother, between these Moors and those Moors? It's a family war. It is a family war. They want you to wake up and join their side of it. They want to use your energy, your frequency to join their side of their invasion that hasn't lasted anywhere. Thoth's kingdom has fallen every single time to the creator. And they still want you to wake up and just go back to Morocco. Oh, we have to slow up on Morocco. When it's connected to Thoth, my brother, when it's connected to the celestial fallen angel beneath the barrier, the underworld, my brother. But what else happened in chronology with this Baalek? All right, so Eglon, you know what I'm saying? He got to drop for 18 years, but then this Benjamite named Ehud obtained access to Eglon and treacherously assassinated him. The Moabites are still pissed off at you for this so-called negro i mean the so-called negro that don't know who he is that's like what's going on yeah you yeah you <laughs> if you don't know what's going on it's a good chance you were invaded on and yes some of them look like us we have to accept that and those that have been against us waking up right now in our, you know what I'm saying, neighborhoods, like what's going on? You got to forgive us because we're going to go a little ham bone a little bit. We're going we gonna to go ham bone. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're going to go ham bone while we figure this out. We're going to figure this out. I mean, you want to claim all this for the dominion of ham. We're going to go ham bone. We're going to get to the bottom of this, man. You got to let us get to the bottom of this. If you're going to help us wake up, wake up. But don't drag us back into a black hole for Moabites, for Morocco. This ain't Morocco, man. You can't have Morocco here and Morocco there. That's called one world order, man. Did the creator give you Morocco here and Morocco there? Did the creator even let Atlantis rock? Any pharaoh rock? So you hate my creator because he's tribal. You hate me because I'm natural. But you knew the sea would awaken. You knew this invasion wouldn't last forever. These treaties don't stand up forever. So Eglon, king of Moab, with the help of Ammonites and Amalekites, succeeded in conquering them and ruling over them for 18 years. At the end of this period, a Benjamite named Ehud obtained access to Eglon, assassinated him, whereupon the Hebrews arose and slaughtered 10,000 Moabites. And that's in Judges 3, 12, 30. Go there. All of it's here. Click the link. So the Most High is already putting it out there. Why and what and what's going on? They're saying, oh, you're invading our territory. We, we was, you invaded our territory that we're transferring inheritance under the name Moabite in 1430. Between the United States America Corporation trustee. They were just trustees, y'all. Only trustees have presidents and vice presidents. Don't trip on who's the next president. They're the president of the corporation. 
No kingdom has a president, a corporation, a trustee. Between them and the Moroccans, who have Morocco, latitude and resources, longitude and latitude. Moabite, Moabite corporation, Moabite. I mean, we're just talking, you know what I'm saying? Balak, king of Moab. We're talking Eglon, king of Moab. We're talking Ruth the Moabite. We're talking what they're considering more. I mean, not just, you know. <laughs> Look, man, they have their own prophets, man. And I don't disrespect. I'm just like, don't disrespect me and my ignorance. Don't give me a prophet of Moab if I'm not a Moabite. And if I am a Moabite, I'm going to choose the creator. I ain't choosing thoughts, man. All right? And that's what we all have to come to is choosing up. Do you choose the creator? Do you choose the slave vibration? Do you choose the ray of vibration that had you groveling at the feet? Groveling at the feet. And the thought of my spellbearing. And we got a lot more to get out of this drop, man. We got some other words from their prophet. The Moabite prophet. You know what I'm saying? Our brother, but their prophet. Noble Drew Ali. You know, it says, explains two portions of history in the Holy Quran. Which the Quran also has the, you know, dropping that Thoth is a prophet. More science tip for right, chapter 4, 45 and 48. All right. So the inhabitants of Amer of Africa. Now, which Africa? See? See? Now you have to say which Africa, man. You can't just Africa us no more because we know too much about the maxim, map of Amexum. We know that this is Northwest Amexum and Amexum is just Africa. So whenever you see Amexum, they're considering all that Africa. This is Africa in North America. This is Africa in North and South America. This is also Africa <laughs> or maybe they just call it Atlantis. And this is your Africa here, Northeast Africa. This is Northeast Africa, y'all. Now you see the, the board they're playing on. So just because you hear Africa, don't think here when they're calling this Northwest Africa here. So let's keep thinking here since it's called Africa. Let's keep going where the drop is. Let's keep it North America, South America with this particular uh, prophet, of, prophet of Moab. It's a prophet for Moab of Moab. The inhabitants of Africa, which one, let's call it North America since they do, are descendants of ancient Canaanites and from the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa, which one, who came from the land of Canaan. So could he possibly be saying that old man Cush, right? This is their father-son situation. Old man Cush, right? The dominion of Cush, dominion of Ham. He's saying that, oh, that, you know what I'm saying? This is the land of Canaan, or here's the land of Canaan. You know what I mean? And they're coming out of here, or they're coming out of here. These are the dominions of Ham. Northwest, northeast, southwest, northeast over here. So which way are we going here with this Africa? I mean, you see how it can get a little bit, you know? You know what I mean? You got to ask more questions. So old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His family, Ham, and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Amexum, which is Africa. The first true and divine name of Africa. All right, the dividing of the land between the father and the son, the father and the son. All right, now we can trace that because we have the father, dominion of Ham, and the son, dominion of Cush. They don't give a shit about, <laughs> you know, Shem, Eber, Eberu, Eber, Eberus. Nah, man. <laughs> Is 187 on your ass, man, because you don't exist in their framework so-called negro that don't know who he is 
the dominion of Cush, northeast and southeast Africa, northwest and southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. They talk about the Americas. In later years, many of their brethren from Asia and Holy Lands joined them, they say. The Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa. So they received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to inhabit and settle northwest. Where's northwest now that we got a map? Courtesy of our brother Christopher Bryant. Oh, this is awesome. This is great. Because the northwest of Mexico is here. So now we have a frame of reference that Noble Drelli is discussing. Every time you hear this northwest of Mexico, northwest Africa, you can stop putting your mind here. You can keep putting your mind in North and South America. Thanks to my brother Christopher Bryant. So what is Noble Dwelly saying? He said Northwest and Southwest America was the father, his father's dominion, Ham, what is his dominion of Ham, they want to hijack it. In later years, many of the brethren from Asia and Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites, listen up, the Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa, America, they mean. So he's saying they received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt. And again, pharaohs of Egypt, Stagia, Kim, Kush are all in America in this reality simulation that we've been digging on already. So these pharaohs of Egypt here gave them permission. They didn't have to go from there to there. They were already here. All right, the Moroccan Empire, Northwest America, right, Africa, Amexum, under the Pharaoh's permission here, it says it right there, North America. Then it says it out again in Atlantis because these are the same Egyptian hijacks. Poseidon set up his main dominion here. It's the same Pharaoh here. That's the Pharaoh here, Atlantean Pharaohs. Then this all sunk and they came here in the 18th dynasty to Moses and set up his situation born of Thoth. And I think we read it was the sixth king at that time, Tut Moses. All right. In the 18th dynasty, according to them and their, you know, geology. Chronology, you know what I'm saying? So let's get back into it. Right, let me get this last bit of noble. Noble, noble, no, no, noble. All right, let's go. So the Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa, which is America, they were founders and are the true possessors of the present, present Moroccan Empire. And so the present Moroccan Empire, they're calling Northwest Africa, which of course to them, to them oh, we're going to get there, Prince Jerry Bay, Northwest and Maxim Africa is North America. That's all we need to know. So check it. The Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest America. They were founders there in Northwest America and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. We're in Northwest in America, North America, with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren. Here's the Confederacy, their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourn from the land of Canaan Seeking new homes. Why? Because Joshua was clearing them out. Atlantis. I mean, Joshua's coming. <laughs> All this is connected, man. So they're cutting out 
Moses is leading a migration back into their promised land, back into their homes. Joshua is now clearing out Canaanites. And yes, they have a problem with that. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from northeast to southwest Africa across the great Atlantis, across great Atlantis, Noble Drew Ali says, even unto the present north, south, and central America, and also Mexico, Mexico, and the Atlantis Islands before the earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. This is all from Noble Drew Ali. You're telling me he don't know about the drop drop about what really is going down now now that we're connecting it now that we can get a frame of reference now that we can see what this eagle line is and what this ruth the moabite is we can ask again why is ruth marrying into judah at the end of this period a benjamite named ehud obtained access to eagle line and treacherously assassinated him, whereby the Hebrews arose and slaughtered 10,000 Moabites. You get that in Judges 3, verse 12. A few years later, Saul waged a war, apparently of little importance. So we got King Saul coming up. Now we got that 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel leading into 1 Kings. Now we can follow the history of this Moabite war that's going on and how it's connected to Ruth the Moabite, the great-grandmother of King David. This is a family war. David also subdued them and made them tributary. Prester John subdued them, subdued the Moabites. The Sultan paid tributary. In Prester John's letters, King John's letters that we have already read, were in part 25. Those are two hour parts, so <laughs> that's what. Dang near 48 hours of research we, we've dug up on books and books into Preston John. So get that. Get to this King David. All right. Keep vibing. Let's go. So what do they want? They want everything. And that's why we have to dig into it before we wake up and go into a black hole of the dominion of Ham and the dominion of Cush. I mean, so-called Negro, you wake up over here in Compton and Watts or in Brooklyn or in between, you know, ATL, wherever you are, wherever you are, Wisconsin, love to you, everybody. And you wake up, or do you fall under this dominion of Ham, the dominion of Kush, this Moroccan empire? What happened to their Atlantis, and why are they continuing to hijack you today? And why is Ruth marrying a son of Judah? Because her father, Eglon, only conquered these Israelites for what? 18 years, and at the end, Benjamite named Ehud came, murdered him, all right, assassinated him, took him out. Whereupon the Hebrews arose and slaughtered 10,000 Moabites. A few years later, here comes Saul waging war, apparently of little importance, they say, <laughs> against them and their allies. David also subdued them and made them tributary, although it's noteworthy that even before this time, a Moabite named Itma was one of his generals so here comes david now remember king solomon has this ring who has all these demons you know uh you know subdued baal and ashrat everyone's subdued by this ring of solomon because these are the gods of the moabites and they subdued their gods and they subdued them after the death of ahab the moabites under meshah rebelled against jeraham and elijah himself against Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, against the king of Judah. So these Moabites and Judah have been going on and on. Now, Ruth came in, what, 18 years? Her, her dad only, you know, held it down. So then Ruth, after the Hebrews came under this Benjamite king, this Benjamite name Ahud, all right, so after the Benjamite name Ahud came, assassinated Eglon, and then Ruth, then what? Married into Judah. Now you have Ruth, the Moabite, marrying into Judah. So now we're caught up on a little bit of Moab history that connects to King David, that connects to the priest king, Preston John, of course. And again, love to Chris uh, Bryant, man, who hit us with this. So this is Ruth, the Moabite, this. All right. All right. So, you know, now that we can keep, you know, reference points and know that when we hear Africa, we're still talking 
in their language, North America and South America, because they would love to colonize Jerusalem that way. We can now have some bit of drop to go forward with. And this is another drop coming from uh, their Moabite prophet. That's respectful. I mean, he's the prophet of Moab. Israel has the prophets of Israel. But if they have Moab, we definitely have the sons of Jacob. Because that's who they're warring against throughout their entire history. Now let's get it quickly. This is from MoorishAmericanNews.com. Islam, they say. Much of the information of this time period, region, and people in question comes from written dialogue between Canaanite rulers and Amenhotep III and Akhenaten called the Armana Letters. Research it. Among other things, the letters mention Canaanite rulers having issues with the Habiru, Hebiru, Eberu, commonly known as Hebrews, a term that at that time that denoted class as a displaced person, not tribe, stat, uh, nation status. So they want to turn Eberu into a displaced thing, but we have an ancestor named Eber, and we understand our connection to Eber, Eberu. Not this displaced, whatever they want to twist it as. Now, what should be noted is that the region called at that time the land of Canaan was populated by city states, each independent of each other and ruled by a single king ruler. So, to occupy the land, one would have to conquer each city state. The letter speaks of a campaign of conquest of the region of a military leader of these people named Joshua. So here comes Joshua, Moses is Joshua. Alright, now we have Moses, this migration happening, now they're mentioning Joshua. And speak of his occupation of Canaan as a matter of past events. Now they dated 1456, we say we, they're playing with our timelines, but let's go. This is natural since the letters are dated after the death of Joshua, subsequently changing the complexion of the conquest effort. Our focus relative to the issue at hand is the people that occupied that region that were driven out as a result of Joshua's campaign. So their focus are the people that Joshua conquered. The Saqqara tomb of Horemhet, Horemhet displays a relief showing Canaanite refugees attempting to enter Egypt. The relief also indicated that their lands and towns were destroyed. So this is the sympathetic view of the Moabite. <laughs> Of the Canaanite getting wiped out by Joshua because they refused to leave the land of Canaan, which was not the land of Canaan, but a promised land to Israel, to Jerusalem. And they wanted it what? They wanted it who? They wanted it all. It wasn't just Canaan they wanted. They wanted the whole dominion. So the creator said, man, we need to put an end to the disorder, the chaos of one world order by these Atlanteans. I already sunk Atlantis. I done destroyed Egypt. Oh, but now we have these Canaanites coming from Canaan. And Canaan is Poseidon, by the way. But let's go. So our focus, their focus, the Moorish American news focus relative to the issue at hand is the people that occupied that region that were driven out as a result of the Joshua campaign. So they're against your ancestor Joshua. Of course, right? Because they wanted it all. The Saqqara tomb of Horeb had displays a relief showing Canaanite refugees attempted to enter Egypt. The relief also indicated that their lands and towns were destroyed. Archaeology supports 56% of cities listed in the Bible that were conquered by Joshua. So archaeology, according to Moorish American News, is supporting at least 56% of the cities listed in the Bible that were conquered by Joshua. So Joshua plays, Moses plays, King David plays, Preston John plays. 
yet it does not support the existence of Moab during that time, saying that the name that the names of Moabite, Edomite, and Ammonite kings had parts of the names of their natural gods embedded within, and that none of these names have been found by them before 1100 BC. So maybe it was after 11. Maybe 1100 BC is a made-up timeline, a Gregorian timeline, remixed in the Middle Ages. But let's keep asking questions. Let's go. While the Bible does not give the names of any of the kings of these times, of these three nations during the period of the Exodus, it does give us a list of Edomite kings pre-nationhood Israel. Genesis 36, verse 31. And some of these kings were associated with cities, while others are associated with a tribal people or region. None were recorded as being succeeded by a son. This is evidence to the fact that these nations remained semi-nomadic and tribal in the death of the strongest chief king, meaning the end of the prominence of that said tribe. As a matter of history, Edomites and Midianites occupied Moab lands and had conflicts. The head chief of one tribe gaining influence over the others on the same land caused recorded history to lean in the favor of the nationality of the reigning chief. All right, so the victor goes to history. Sometimes the losers move away. Sometimes they forget, lost, and become absorbed, and sometimes they prevail. This demonstrates that the fact that these archaeologists not finding evidence of settled Moabite presence does not prove they did not exist. A late 13th century papyrus, papyrus. All right. Oh, they try to all snap me. Oh, I got too good. Uh, sometimes it gets too good, man. That means I need to drink some water. That's all that, man. Don't you play, play. Oh, we're going to get you back. Oh, we're going to get you back. Try to old snap us, man. Y'all see how they do us? That's all right, man. Where's my water? Where's my water, man? I need a break. Somebody knew I needed a break. All right, where we at? Let go. We're going right into it. We're going right back in it. I said Papyrus. I said Papyrus. They said no more. Because you remember the Rus. Rus, Russia, Rus, Clan, Rus, Ross, Andrews, Andros, Papyrus. Papyrus. All right. Check it out. All right. All right. All right. Where's my. Where's my beat, man? We're about to get this dismount pretty soon, man. We have to come with our beat. We gotta get our fireplace going on. If we're gonna do it, we gotta do it right. Man, look to everybody, man, that's uh is taking some time out. You at work, man, so I'm trying to read it all to you. I'm trying to get it all for y'all, man. You see me you see me trying. As long as you see me trying. Don't you play play. All right. All right. We're good. Fireplace is back. You know, this ain't the first time they all snap us, man. So it's <sighs> a good break for everybody. You know, if I was you, I look forward to the old snaps. <laughs> but sometimes you just need to absorb what you just got. All right. So it gives us a good time to recap. Um, you know, so when we get into this war situation, we get into these constant wars, these back and forth, these back and forth. And they're claiming Joshua like, oh, he's just invading us. No, he's messing up our one world order. Oh, Joshua's jamming everybody up. Right? Moses is jamming everybody up, according to them. They want it their way. They want their guys. They want their order. 
What does the creator want? You notice how they never bring up the creator. They never bring up what the creator wants. All right, man. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let go, internet. Oh, man. I mean, when you talk static, sometimes static trying to stop you. Just keep you talking on the static. Matter of fact, man, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let go. All right. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Papa Roos, Papa Roos. So we have a late 13th century Papyrus mentions Edomites and Moabites trying to enter Egypt because of a famine, right? Edomites and Moabites in a 13th century Papyrus mentions Edomites and Moabites trying to enter Egypt because of a famine. This informs us that both Edom and Moab existed as people before 1100 B.C. Regardless of the lack of evidence of their own city-state, at the very least, it took 200 to 300 years for them to develop into a large political community. This would push their origin, they're saying, to 1400. So well within the time period of Joshua campaign. Now, the teaching of the prophet, they say prophet, prophet of Moab. He's the Moabite prophet. Moroccan prophet. All right, noble Drew Ali. And the Moore Science Temple of America on the subject reads thus. All right, so here's a quote again from Noble Drew Ali. The industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest and Southwest Africa, we're talking Northwest, Southwest Africa again, Northwest, Southwest America. These are the Moabites. All right, so the industrious acts of the Muslims of North America and South America, this is their code word, these are the Moabites, Hamathites, Hamites, Canaanites, who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua. Body bag. So we're not talking Africa <laughs> like you think, oh, Africa. Oh man, they trying to jab us up. They trying to internet us, man. Oh, but we're gonna see it through. Ain't no static in play play. Alright, so let's go to the one minute mark because I think that's when we had a nice, a nice comprehensive layout of what's going on here. Actually, that's good right there. Northwest Amexum, Africa. So North America is Africa. South America is Africa. Northeast Amexum is Northeast Africa. All right, let's get it. I want to get that bigger shot here. There we go, there we go. That's the one. That's the one. So Africa here, Africa here, Africa here, Morocco here, Morocco there, Morocco there, Morocco there, Morocco there. One world order. When their main situation falls, where do they go? They scatter. Where does Thoth say he go? To the land of the hairy barbarians, to barbarian. Barbarian. Tartarian. North. Uh, what they're calling North Africa, but what's really North West Africa is here. See what I'm saying? So now we can kind of break some of this code down when we get these quotes. Because they read them out of context and people say, oh, Africa. Yeah, Africa. Yeah, okay. But is that what we're referring to? Is that where the drop's at? Well, they call this Africa too. This is Northwest, according to them. Uh, where's 
with that drought. Okay, here we go. So that their prophet, their Moabite prophet, Noble Drew Ali said. The industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest, Southwest Africa, which is North South America. These are the Moabites, Hamites and Canaanites who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua. And received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt, Northwest, Southwest Africa. Northwest, Southwest Africa. We're only talking the Americas. So let's stop playing. Let's get real, real, real with this prophet of Moab. Let's get truly, truly real with what's going on in front of our eyes. The industrious acts of the Muslims of North and South America. These are the Moabites. Hamites, Canaanites in North South America who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua in North and South America and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt in North and South America. And that's why it says here, the Moroccan Empire in Northwest Africa, which is America, under the Pharaoh's permission. Under the Pharaoh's permission. Under the Pharaoh's permission in Atlantis. Under the Pharaoh's permission. It's always under the permission of their Pharaoh, Tut Moses, born of thought. So that's why they have these wars with these Moabite Hebrew wars with these Eglons and Baalaks and, and their kings being taken out by Israelites, Israelites being taken out by them. And now they want it all. They want you to wake up and not know that they want it all, desire you, desire you to be asleep because they're upset that they were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua. Joshua is very real to them. Joshua is a menace to them. And they receive permission from their pharaohs, Thoth of Egypt, Atlantis, to settle in that portion of Egypt, Atlantis. In later years, they form themselves kingdoms later on, people. After they confederated, confederated themselves against you. In later years, they form themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called this day Morocco. Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli. Now you hear Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli. These are the kingdoms of those that settled with the permission of the pharaohs of Egypt after they were driven out of North and South America by Joshua. Here. Then they tried to do their thing here, but they were driven out here to here. Then they set up here. They were driven out here and then settled here. And what the brother Christopher Bryant said, he grew, he free to cross over. Remember, Atlantis sunk. America is their new world. So people he brewed or crossed over Atlantis to Northwest of Maxim. So when we talk Northwest of Maxim again, for the last time, then we're going to get into this Prince Uriel Bay, man. All right, don't worry, I saw when we get into all Northwest of Mexico. All right, so they crossed over here to get here, or they were already here and then crossed out of here to get there. Either way, there's a crossover happening, and who's breaking your ankles? Where's the ankle breaking happening? So let's get some of this Prince Uriel Bay. It's actually a perfect place to pick up, man. Oh, praise the Creator. Wow, wow. So let's get a few more minutes out of this. It's going to get mighty interesting. We're going to come in for the dismount and that OSB. Thank you for surfing the wave with me. All right, man, I'm on daddy daycare, man. My baby's up, man. You okay?
I love you. Mm-hmm. All right, I got to do some things. Y'all dig on this Prince Uriel Bay for a few minutes. We'll come in with a dismount. Empire, particularly in and throughout the United States. So now, when we look at the uh, beginnings of the Moorish um, corporate family trust, known as the United States, or more commonly known as the United States, it's important to understand that it was not originally known as the United States uh, in 1774. That is what has become a common appellative. Um, but if you do any research and you look at the, uh, the Anales Continens, the Anales Continens is the continental records, which prior to that was known as, um, the Anales Imperium, which was the imperial records. And now in the imperial, in imperial records, you have what is known as the Consociuimos Regnum. The Consociuimos Regnum was a consolidation or a convocation of 13 royal families. Those royal families were Moorish families uh, that basically consolidated their power for a number of reasons, of which I'll go into. Consolidated their power. These 13 royal Moorish families put their family power together. Now you have the 13 colonies. Now you have the Confederacy against you. Now you have the North Africa, Northwest over here, Africa, Northeast over there, Africa, consolidating their powers. Psalms 83, they made a Confederacy. They are Confederate against you. Let's go. Uh, in forming this uh, corporate family trust, again, as I said, that we call the United States Corporation. Um... And they did this uh, under what was known as the Capitis Societas, known to you as the Articles of Association. And three years later, the Capitis uh, Civitatis, known as the Articles of Confederation. Um, however, as you can see from the names that I'm giving, or the terminology uh, that's being used, is that these documents were not uh, originally in English. Uh, Many of them were in the ancient Moorish Latin uh, language. Um, Again, as I said, if you uh, do any extensive research, uh, if you look in um, their particular sections in the Library of Congress, as well as the Department of State Library, of which only very few people have access to, um, that will give you more information on uh, the early years of the forming of the United States Corporation. Um, At any rate, um, as I said, it was essentially or loosely termed Consociuimos Regnum, which basically was an act. It was not uh, a name per se that was used for the United States, because when you say Consociuimos Regnum, uh, Consociuimos basically means that um, we have united, meaning that we have done something, or a group of us have done something, meaning we nobles or we membrana of this particular thing that we have formed, um, uh, or these united kingdoms. And so, Consociuimos Regnum um, was the consolidation or convocation of these 13 kingdoms. Uh, But what has happened with the whole United States aspect is that they've been using um, an indicative verbal action in the noun sense, or nonsense, if you will, meaning that when they say the United States, obviously they're using a definite article, the, and so therefore using it in the noun sense. But when you say anything, even according to the rules of English, and you add an ED like I walked to the store, Obviously, that indicates that you've done something as in a verbal action, um, and therefore cannot be used uh, as a name or, again, in the noun sense. So, these particular 13 kingdoms, uh, later misnamed colonies and states, 
categories known as bys, bags, or bagla bags. Um, and uh, these bay titles were titles that were also used by uh, the first ruler of China, known as Qin Bai. Mm. And of course, so we got some Chinese. Known as bys, bags, or bagla bags. Um, and, and you add an ED like I walked to the store, obviously that indicates that you've done something as in a verbal action. Um, and therefore cannot be used uh, as a name or again in the noun sense. So <clears throat> these particular 13 kingdoms, uh, later misnamed colonies and states, had rulers known as Bais, Bais, or Begla Bays. So the Bays are the rulers of these families and these kingdoms that are ruling and making a confederacy against you. Let's go. Um, and uh, these Bay titles were titles that were also used by uh, the first ruler of China, known as Qin Bai, and of course also used uh, in the Osman, the Moorish Osman Empire, uh, more commonly known as the Ottoman Empire. Uh, the Bay or Bay title. Turks. But anyway, these Bays or Bay rulers on the continent in the 1760s and 70s were kings, princes, and governors owing allegiance to the Sultan at that time, uh, Sayyidi Ibn Abdullah Muhammad the 17th. The Sultan owing allegiance to the Sultan. One more time. Do you owe allegiance to the Sultan, my so called Negro? Let's go. Used by uh, the first ruler of China known as Qin Bai, and of course also used uh, in the Osman, the Moorish Osman Empire, uh, more commonly known as the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Bai or Bay title. But anyway, these Bays or Bay rulers on the continent in the 1760s and 70s were kings, princes, and governors owing allegiance to the Sultan at that time, uh, Sayyidi Ibn Abdullah Muhammad the 17th. Uh, who ruled between 1757 and 1790 from Marrakesh. Now, Marrakesh at that time was uh, Philadelphus or Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Uh, was both, uh, this was a part of Mauritania or Mauritania. And Mauritania was actually in North and South Dakota. Uh, what? North, North and South Dakota, Philadelphia, the Sultan ruled from Philly? Ah, uh, why these, you know, temples set up in Philly? Why they got them all set up right? Ah, uh, I mean, one more again before we get into our dismount. Uh, Sayyidi Ibn Abdullah Muhammad the 17th, uh, who ruled between 1757 and 1790 from Marrakesh. Now, Marrakesh at that time was uh, Philadelphus Philly. or Philadelphia, uh, which was both, uh, this was a part of Mauritania or Mauritania. And Mauritania was actually in North and South Dakota. What? Uh, here in North America. Whoa. And, uh, of course, Marrakesh, as I said, was Philadelphia. And Marrakesh, which later became known as Morocco, uh, means uh, sons of Cush. And. Uh, sons of Cush. Not sons of Shem, not sons of Jacob. You don't exist. You don't matter. Sons of Kush. Sons of Ham. <laughs> All you got to do is let them talk. Now, we just got a couple minutes of that. Next time, we're going to get a big chunk out of this. Next time, we're just going to let this rock for like a whole hour. Um, but right quick, man, you know, as promised, I just want to get this section in the OSB. Oh, you're going to make me go there again, man. Because you're going to snap me, man. Yeah, we're going to make a nice, comfortable, cozy dismount right here for you, man. All the links are here for you to dig on. Um, but, yeah, I mean, on the basics of things, when we're linking up these moors, like, uh, you know, their, their uh, noble Drew Ali, man, their, their prophet, you know what I mean? Um, when you link up this with the Moab, with the Canaan, with all that, and then deny the other <laughs> side of things, your 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 melanated cousins, your family, whatever you want to call it, and take it all for Morocco. 
and claim it all for Kush. Claim it all for for Ham and your particular families, your thirteen families. Don't claim your cousins. Don't 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 blame us, you know, for creating a wave, a wake up call when the shit stinks. You know what I'm saying? Don't blame us, man, for this wave of fresh air when the shit stinks so damn bad, brothers. Now we're gonna get it like this, man. If I can just get this patch. Here we go, here we go. Now, this little section here, back to the OSB, page 736. Make that 730. Are we going to the foes? Oh, the book of Ezra. Ezra, Ezra. Ah, the origin of Mohammedanism. Let's make it bigger. For the dismount. Bigger. For the dismount. Beautiful. And let's just get some of this, man. Let's make our dismount right here. Pull it up. OSB, origin of Mohammedanism. The Lord said, after Louis Mong had cast out all other false gods in his earth dominions, he set to work enriching his heavenly home, employing no less than 7,000 million angel slaves for that purpose. Now the place and extent of his heavenly capital was from has sent us to Roma, Roma, and then toward the Aquarian Mountains. His palace was modeled after Enochisa's at Itashon, Enochisa, you can look that up in their glossary, pull it up, and of equal magnificence, his greatest warriors were now exalted as lords, generals, marshals, and so on, so their, their gods were being called lords. Lord this, Lord that. And he provided rites and ceremonies and tournaments, Roma, tournaments, Roman tournaments, and all manners of heavenly diversities. But he made the rules of entrance to his palace so rigid that only his highest officers and visiting gods could gain access to him. Now for upward a thousand years. The Now for upward a thousand years, listen up. Now, for upward a thousand years, the angel warrior Gabriel, alias Thoth, Thoth Gabriel, is this the angel Gabriel? All throughout, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, all, all throughout different, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying, script, you know what I mean? Is this the angel Gabriel, alias Thoth? Have they hijacked Gabriel? Is Gabriel hijacked? We don't know, but look what they're saying. Now, for upward a thousand years, the angel warrior Gabriel, alias Thoth, all right, who's also Muhammad, we got that, out the same text, all right, so Ben Teluima, his most faithful sub-god, so Thoth is a sub-god of this Luima, who is also called Christ, the false Christ, and Luima had promised Gabriel Thoth, when he overthrew Baal and cast him in hell, in his hell, he would give to Gabriel a great heavenly kingdom with an earthly base. Accordingly, Gabriel applied for Jerusalem. So Gabriel, or Thoth, told Louis Mong, his big OG, because I help you throw Baal into, my, into hell, to a hell, I want Jerusalem. Gabriel applied for Jerusalem. Thoth applied for Jerusalem. Now you have Thoth's takeover of Jerusalem, North and South America, and for the heavens thereunto belonging, which is Guatemala, according to this text, and for 1,000 million slaves, which is okay. But Louis Mong postponed the matter from time to time for more than 600 years. Thoth, alias Gabriel, then sent this message to Louis Mong to eat, to read. He says, by virtue of mine own worth before the gods of heaven, I greet thee in peace and in love, first in remembrance of thy many promises to me, in which thou hast kept no part of their faithfully. So he said, big homie, you ain't been faithful at all. You ain't kept no promises. 
second of all, that thou art not Christ. So remember, Louis Mons is called Christ. But thought is saying, man, you're not Christ. You're not no messenger, <laughs> which is all knowledge, but a, but a usurper and pretender. So now thought is raising up on his big homie, calling him a usurper and pretender. Third, that I made thee with what thou art. I made you what you are, said thought. I made you, man. And by my own hand, help thee to cast out Baal and Asherah. I told y'all Baal and Asherah rock together. So Thoth raised up on Baal and Asherah, got them out the way for the false Christ Loima. Now you got Christians. And now Thoth's people are Muslims because he's Muhammad. The same crescent moon, the same crescent, the same Ra, Isis, crescent moon, sun. Same thought. So he said, third, I made you what you are, and by my own hand helped thee to cast out Baal and Asherah, and all the Roman, Yen, and Argos, Yen, gods. And I said, where have I seen Roman, Yen, and Argos before? Of course, man, in the Hyborian War. The Hyborian War map went over here. You see Argos, and it's right next to Stagia, Egypt. Argos is right here. All right, all right, all right. All right. I done told you. So Thoth, Abriel, Ali, alias Gabriel, then sent this message. So he sent, man, you ain't nothing, man. <laughs> and so I hope you cast out all these guys, of which matters. It is known that these great... That these three great heavens thou didst promise me for more than 700 years to give me a kingdom of a thousand million subjects. And fourth, since thou art safely raised up above all gods, so I raised up this Christ, these Christians, within these regions thou hast affected to not know me. Yea, and in thy great heavenly recreations and tournaments and receptions thou hast not commanded my presence or in any way shown more remembrance of me than as if I were an Essian, an Essian, <laughs> as if I was a Hebrew, damn near, is what he's trying to say, you, you ain't giving me no love, and fifth, thou this long promise me, that if thou should succeed in establishing a sub-kingdom on earth, or in Hada, Haiti, near in the earth, near the earth, thou was hand the same over to me, to rank thee in all things, but thou hast greedily kept both kingdoms to thyself, even the underworld, underworld, making either place thy residence according to the time and seasons most propitious to thine own glory and ease. So this Christ, this Louis Ma, kept it all to himself. And lastly, that thou, thou sacrifices the liberty of thy subjects, making then making them thy laborers to embellish thy kingdom and making them little, be little better than slaves and forever parading in the ceremonies given in thy applause. So he said, man, and you're treating your slaves a certain way. So here comes Thoth, acting like he's going to raise up this soul force, this Gabriel, this Thoth. He's going to raise up the soul force. Let's skip here, let's skip here. Here I will establish my kingdom in heaven and forever I will show this false Christ what I can do. So now Thoth raises up his situation. <laughs> Behold, I have, I have a sword and will cut to pieces Louis Mon's kingdom on earth. For listen, I, the old Egyptian libraries, in the old Egyptian libraries are books and tablets and manuscripts that will show the perversity of the Constantine Bible. So he's breaking down the Constantine Bible, the Bible of Louis Mon, the Constantine, Constantinople, what they did with the Roman hijack, the New Testament, their false Christ. And he said he has these books in the Egyptian libraries, tablets and manuscripts that would show the perversity of how they hijacked this New Testament, Constantine Bible, not the law of the creator, but the New Testament the situation coming out. Now when we talk about this Louis Ma uh, man we got a lot more to get to man especially when they tie it into uh, 
the Arabinia, Arabinia. But let's get right here for the dismount. The Christians are merciless warriors. This false Christ and his worshipers are working for Romans and not for salvation. Wherever they go, they destroy the libraries and all matters of learning. They burn your books, right? Will you submit like slaves to have them despoil you? Is there no Arabian blood in your vein? Arabian blood in your vein. And we talk that Arabian talk. We're only talking about Arabia, which is here. Africa. Arabia. Here. Arabia. Africa. Is there no African blood in your vein? While we hijack these people, while they take them for who they are and what they are. What are we going to do when it comes to this thought? What happens when thought comes near you? So we're going to get back into this, man, for part three or part four. The Baphomet, the defamation of the name Muhammad, the immortality of thought. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning and beneath us lay the land of the children of Kim. Raging they came with spears, but I raised my staff and put a ray of vibration, striking them still. Then I spoke calm and peaceful words, cowered them, cowed I them by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when I released them. And I ask you to be released. I ask you to be released of her, to come out of the slave vibration, to come away from the spell barrier. To awaken, to become, to be. I love all y'all getting cozy. I love all y'all getting cozy in the drop or with the drop. You know what I'm saying? This is our vibration that we're taking back. The indigenous warrior, the indigenous vibration. This is the sacred tree vibration, not the pyramid vibration. The sacred tree vibration. And I ask all y'all to keep raising your vibration and being patient with each other. Raise your house up. Raise yourself up. Raise your tribe up. I love all y'all. See y'all in part four. You know what I mean? This is so much fun uh, getting cozy with y'all, man. So I hope that we got to make each other's day a little more cozy today. You know what I'm saying? Stay up, suit up, choose up at all times. Love y'all.